Good evening and welcome to another performance of the Austin Connection, a presentation of the Austin Folk Music Foundation in cooperation with Austin Community Television and Austin Cable Vision. My guest host this evening, Stephen Fromholtz. Makes you glad to be alive. <laughs> gives you reason to live. Here's a song I wrote for Larry Gatlin that gives him reason to live. It's called Sour Grapes. <laughs> if I hear old Larry Gatlin sing just one more song about love, I believe I'll fall down on my knees and pray for power from above. To strike that boy with lightning From the brisket to the bone And leave the Gatlin brothers tenors Make Larry a berry tone Sour grape We can take it all out in the mix We'll save the tapes If it's bitching and moaning and crying Is what it takes and it's a bitter wine you make with sour grapes. If I hear the Statler brothers sing that same damn song again and reminisce about that and this and who and where and when, I believe I'll steal a Chevrolet, 56 or 57. And leave tire tracks in the two-tone polyester suits, neighbors. Well, let them harmonize up in heaven. Sour grapes. We can take it all out in the mix. We'll save the tape. If it's bitching and moaning and crying is what it takes, then it's a bitter wine you make with sour grapes. If just one more fan in the old saloon hollers, from host, do you do any Jimmy Buffett? <laughs> Believe I'll buy that boy a long neck, and I'll tell him where he can stuff it, <laughs> and hire myself a band of mercenary soldiers, because Buffett's got my goat. Send them dangerous critters to the Florida Keys. <laughs> they can sink his damned old boat. Sour grape. We can take it all out in the mix. We'll save the tape. If it's bitching and moaning and crying is what it takes. It's a bitter wine you make with sour grapes. Recitation now, folks. We've damn near been overrun, you know, with rabbits and ravens and bears. Everyone's an outlaw now. Ain't no one really cares But Willie, he's a wailing and wailing, he's a willing And there's Conway and Loretta I'm playing here on the Austin Connection, neighbors My career's doing a whole lot better Sour grape We can take it all out in the mix We'll save the tape if it's bitching and a moaning and crying, what it takes, then it's a bitter wine you make with sour grapes. Oh, sour grapes! Wonderful, wonderful. Good to have you. Pull up a mic. Oh, it's nice to be had. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lavaliers. Mm. I live Lavalier. Find a good place to stick it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, over here like this one. Yeah, right. Love your flower, I think. Thanks. Well, everyone got a, I got a flower. I like it. It's my favorite color, flower. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, just go down the list here. Throw it away. Yeah. 
I hear you've been doing some acting. I have been. Tell yes. me about uh, it. Hmm. Did a play this fall called Willie the Shake. My. Uh... Right. Thank you, thank you. It was, it was a, it's a, a play written by two local playwrights, uh, Tommy White and Nick Andrews, performed at the Transact Theater this fall, and uh, a local director, local cast, and my Austin acting debut. Mm. <laughs> And I was wonderful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. I had a great time. Oh, good. It's a good show. Uh, did you sing a lot in it or act? No, or? It's a, it's a, it was a comedy in two acts with some music in it. I sang uh, uh, one song uh, off stage during a little dance scene. And then the finale of the show was the entire cast sang a song that uh, Shake Russell wrote called Deep in the West. And it was in the show because my the, one of the playwrights is also Shake's publisher, so it I stuck see. Song <laughs> Slip that little sucker in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that line to explain there. Uh, I see. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Do you consider yourself to be a uh, an exponent of the Austin sound? An exponent. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> The Austin, I, am, I am definitely part of the Austin music scene. I love it. I've been living here a long time, and uh, I've written some fine songs here, and I've played a lot of music around town. And my musical, my musical uh, heart and soul is around Austin. Whatever I do, I'll do it out of here. I've been to L.A. and New York and Nashville. They said, what the hell are you doing? You know? <laughs> Austin, they don't ask me that question. They say, go ahead, it's old Fram Holtz. He'll be all right. <laughs> Have you done a lot of recording, or do you still? I've uh, recorded uh, on the on the left coast and the right coast, and uh, <laughs> in Nashville, and uh, recorded in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at Leon Russell Studio, mm. at the old church up there. You have and your own uh, recording. I have my own. Uh, I haven't got a studio, but I have my own uh, record company now. My partners and I have a record company called Felicity Records, and uh, our purpose is to make records in and from and for Austin. And we've had a couple of projects out. I had a Christmas record come out, and uh, I had a live record a couple of years ago. Excellent. Do you like hearing yourself on tape? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the wrong business if I don't, you know. <laughs> How important has been the development of <coughs> recording in Austin for the promulgation of the Austin sound? Uh, recording in Austin has just recently come of age. There have been studios around this area for a long, long time. I've... <laughs> I've been the test case in many studios around town. <laughs> so we're opening a new studio. Call from home, so we'll work it out for you. <laughs> but uh, back when uh, the Street Studios opened up in 1970, 71, 72 it was, I guess, I was the first person to go in there and record in that studio. And now Chris Cross owns it, you know. Yeah, right. But the, the point is that uh, there are now two or three world-class, state-of-the-art recording studios in Austin in this area, and more than that in Texas. And that is uh, the latest change in, uh, excuse me, in a long, in a long progression of uh, upgrading our abilities and talents and taking ourselves not necessarily seriously, but for real, in that there's something coming out of Austin. Do you feel you learn something from the recording process when you're in the studio? Yes. <laughs> I'm just now learning to uh, get to the point where I like to record. I, didn't, I haven't liked to record that much. The studio is very, can be a very sterile place. I play my music for people. I play it for me and, and uh, for the folks who come and see me play. I'm now getting to the point where I can go into the studio and produce someone else. I, I, I know enough about the process and about what goes on to know uh, what time is all about in the studio. It's a shame to waste time in the studio because that's where the money is, is the time you spend in there. And studios are like bowling alleys. It's the same time of day all the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they ever change the lights, you know, it's the same way all the time. Does your style change as a result of recording or of just evolution over the years? It's changed uh, some. I've always tried to do the same thing, which is entertain the folks I work for, work with. My job's entertainment when I go to a, a gig, a, a, a nightclub or a concert. And that never changed, trying to enter, wanting to entertain the folks. I love it. Well, then and do you write songs to entertain? Or write I write songs, songs to entertain me, and I always have. And, I was, uh, and uh, that's my quality control, because I'm real picky. And if a song doesn't suit, I, I don't finish songs I don't, have, I don't believe in and don't like. There's no sense in putting something out you don't like a lot, you know. And uh, 
Uh, I don't try to write hits. I try to write songs. Well, why don't you give us another one? <laughs> <laughs> you smooth talking right. devil. You, know? yeah, <laughs> you get pretty good at that. This is a uh, fairly new song. Uh, it's a fairly new song. It's a tune that I wrote. Uh, it's like a poker hand. I'll play these. It's a song I wrote for my wife, whose name is Janie Lake, and uh, she lets me live with her. <laughs> called Jane's house. Jane takes a look at me, says I look worse for the road. She blesses my face with her eyes and she lets me come in. You lucky dog, she did it again. Jane takes a look in my eyes And she's looking for love She sees what she needs And she smiles As our lips barely touch Your lucky dog She loves you so much The grandest surprise In my jaded old life is the fact we're still friends I'm always welcome at Jane's house No matter how seldom at Jane's house I pray my welcome at Jane's house Never ends Never ends Jane takes a hold of my hand And she shows me way Away with a lady who laughs And who occasionally cries Your lucky dog, sweet Jane, never lies And Jane takes the time to be mine when we're so far apart Saving my place by her side While the home fires burn You silly fool Will you ever learn The finest delight in my life She's my wife She's my lover, my friend And I'm on the run back to Jane's house Soon we'll be one back at Jane's house And I'll always come back to Jane's house Once again, I'm always welcome at Jane's house no matter how seldom at Jane's house, I'll always come back to Jane's house once again, once again.
Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to the second half of the Austin Connection. We're visiting with Steve Rumholtz. Good evening. Tell me, how do you write a song? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take a bunch of words. I see. <laughs> Writing a song for me is, a, is, a, is a, a long process on occasion. Sometimes it takes about an hour and a half. The text of Children was written in an hour and a half one evening in 1967. It all came, <laughs> rolled out, you know. Uh, I'm working on a song right now. I've been working the melody for the last year and a half, and I'm just about finished with it. Do you start with the words or the melody or the chords? I start with a thought, a musical thought or, or, or a, a, a lyrical thought. And try, my, my process boils down to trying to make the uh, music and the lyrics agree with one another. And then my presentation is the third part. When I have those three things together, I feel like I've got a song that is right uh, in my heart. You know. Great. Tell us about uh, your guest this evening. Julie Jean. Oh, yeah. I first heard Julie Jean Renault at Kerrville this last year. And uh, I love Cajun music. I always have. And this lady epitomizes uh, what a lot of folks are trying to do with Cajun music. I'm real curious to ask you a whole bunch of questions. But uh, let's well, hear her sing first. Yeah, Julie Jean Julie Jean Renault. Renault. This is a song I wrote called Le Sou de Louisiane. If you don't know what that means, it means the South of Louisiana. It's about being homesick. Lately I've been thinking, I just don't back up my car. Throw in these dirty clothes and this beat up guitar. Head down I tend till I cross the Texas plain. It's gonna feel so good to be back. You know these L.A. people, they can be kind of cold You know they're how fashion that they low on soul I said they're low on soul Mama's on the back porch, chilling black-eyed peas Grandma sitting with the just as Pretty as you please Papa's on the bayou Running, drawing lines again It's gonna feel so good To be back In the sewer of Louisiana Mama's peeling shrimp She gonna make a baby gumbo She say you're looking Kind of skinny girl We gotta put some meat on your bone Why don't you stop this craziness Come home where you belong Lately I've been thinking I just a pack up my car Throw in my dirty clothes And this beat up guitar Head down I tend Till I cross the Texas plain It's gonna feel so good to be back in the sewer of the Louisiana, the sewer of the Louisiana, oh, 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 oh. yeah. Big finish. Find some place to clip it on. I'll, you, I'll hold the guitar sure if you'll can. figure out. That was to... delightful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I know you're a Cajun with a crazy look in your eye when you sing. Well, that, that's in it. my blood now. <laughs> it gives it I away. can't help but have that crazy look. We were sitting backstage earlier, and you were singing a song that was, a, you said it was an old 1790, 1795 mm -hmm. song. Where do you find Cajun songs like that? Who, where, who um, taught them to you? Mostly it's, it's, it's traditions. You have to talk to the people. A lot of it is family traditions. All my family are musicians. My mama was a blues singer in New Orleans a lot, oh, early 1940s. And uh, she taught me a lot of songs, my grandparents. My papa was a, a fiddler, 
you know. So yeah. you go to the, the crawfish festivals, you eat your boudin, <laughs> you, you dance with a little two-step, uh, and you hear all these old songs, mostly from the old timers nowadays, and you have to kind of corner them because they're a little shy because they have so many people coming to them nowadays and wanting to learn the songs. They don't count much to outsiders down there. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it does help to speak French. What brought you to Austin? Well, I tell you, I got in the car one day. I was living in New Orleans, and New Orleans, bless its heart, it's got a lot of nice things about it, but it's also got some crazy people who live there. I lived there for a while. I mean, if you're running in New Orleans, you, it's not because you're jogging for your health, because somebody's behind you. So I said, I've had it. i got to get away. So I started driving, and I, I hit the Texas border, and it started getting prettier and prettier. I saw these wildflowers looking up with their bright little faces, and I said, this is it. I'm coming here. And everybody was so nice and warm, which is such a rare thing in this world. I've traveled a lot, you know, throughout this country, playing and singing. People are really genuine here. I, I believe that. Thank you, Ryan. Austin is, is Austin. There's, there's no other place like it. Tell me about your movie. <clears throat> I'm glad you asked that I question. <laughs> I'm the movie. Mm. The movie is called Southern Comfort, and I accidentally got hired. I made such a pest of myself to the director. I mean, I was Don't subtle. I was subtle. I went, make me a star. <laughs> he said, well, I'll let you be an extra. And then one day, <laughs> I was standing there. He says, hey, are you? I looked around, me? He said, yeah, you. So I come up, and he gave me some lines to say in French. And the, the movie's title is Southern Comfort, and it has um, Powers Booth and Wonderful Keith Carradine. Yeah, they're both very good. I mean, I make the movie, but <laughs> anyway, my lines <laughs> are my lines are allons danser and c'est mon tour encore, which means let's dance. And <laughs> it's my turn now. Now you have to see the movie to get the context of all of this. You know, <laughs> don't get the wrong idea. Can we get a couple more songs from you tonight? Sure, I believe you could talk me into all it. All right. If I can get unclipped here, anyway. Yeah, just go right ahead. I'll keep my hands to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jenna Jean Reno. We got a little thing in New Orleans we like to call the blues. Now, this is a song about feeling like a Monday morning on a Saturday night, and I call it All I Got Is The Blues. <laughs> Got no booze, I got no cigarettes. I got no money to pay my debts. Got no man, he, he, he up and left. All I've got is the blues. Well, well, well sunny, sunny weather's gonna shine on my best step someday. But I. Don't know whether it can chase my blues away. Hey, yeah, you took my love and you took my pride. You were just taking me for a ride. Wherever you are and wherever you do. Well, baby, I hope you got that blues. And I can understand, baby. Do me like you do When I gave you My best loving daddy I was so good to you Oh, oh, oh Got no booze I got no cigarettes I got no money To pay my debts Got no man He up and left All I got is a blues Yeah all I've got is a blues I'm talking about All I've got is a blues This is a song about the failure to communicate I call it Read Between the Lines Come 
Come on, baby, you're pretty smart. You can figure it out. You gotta listen with all your heart to know what I'm talking about. I'm not the kind of woman who can easily tell a mind. You gotta read between the lines. Read between the lines I know that I've got A lot of foolish pride And sometimes I say things I don't mean Cause I'm hurting inside My words come tumbling out In jumble tangle knots And what I meant to say I didn't say it all to Understand my thoughts you gotta read between the lines Read between the lines You're the kind of man You're very secretive So afraid of being taken that you've Never learned to give between a friend and lover, there's a very fine line. You gotta choose one or the other, so baby, take some time to read between the lines. Read between the lines. Read between the lines. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Jean Renault, Stephen Fromholtz. Tune in next week for Tim Henderson and Jimmy Gilmore. Good night. Wailing and wailing, he's a wailing. And there's Conway and Loretta. Well, I'm playing here on the Austin Connection, neighbors. My career's doing a whole lot better. Sour grape. We can take it all out in the mix, we'll save the tape. If it's bitching and a moaning and crying, what it takes, then it's a bitter wine you make with sour grapes. Oh, sour